We got the camera fired up. Now we're ready to shove her in there. Shove her in the beaver hole. Get the flashlight turned on. Alrighty, I think we're ready to go in. Well, good day guys. Welcome to this adventure. It's an awesome one, but I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by mm-usa.com. It's mm-grill, mmm-usa.com. It's a really wicked backyard camp grill. I got a feeling we're going to be cooking something delicious on this. See something over here, guys. Come on. Check out the absolute devastation the beavers have done on this area. They have slaughtered, cut all here. It's almost like a freaking clear cut. There's obviously beavers around here and we're about to turn them into dinner. As long as we can get our wits about us, and figure out the best way to put beavers in the pot. What do you guys think? <laughs> I can't believe how many things they've caught in this one little small area. There's a pond over here. Now beavers are nocturnal, so it's gonna be pretty tricky to find them right now. We're gonna have to do a little bit of exploration around this pond and see if we can't figure out where they're hanging out and we're a good place to set some traps so we can make some food out of these beavers. Well, it's springtime here, and as you know, spring means wild edibles, so we got some leeks here. So if we're lucky enough to catch a beaver, we might be able to make some delicious beaver burgers, mix some wild leeks in there, It'd be like a delicious wild burger made right from the wilderness. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we can find. This kind of neat here. Looks like a beaver sharpened his teeth right here and decided, nah, that's not a good idea. And then he switched over to the far side and he started working over here, but then he gave up. Maybe he looked up at the tree and decided, that tree's not gonna fall toward the pond. I think they want to aim it into the pond because that's where their safety comes from. They can't feel, they don't feel safe up on land. There's all sorts of predators who can get them like coyote and uh, fox might make a run at them. And you know, everything likes to eat beaver. And I think a lot of times what they do is they chew it and they let it weaken on itself so that if it does finally fall, you know, nature kind of does a little bit of the work for it. And a big wind comes, blows it over, and then they've got some delicious fresh bark to eat. Seeing as how this is a pretty good candidate to set a trap, what I'll do is I'll put a camera up here and I'm gonna come back tomorrow and check it out. We'll see if we don't get any activity here. Now I don't know for sure that there's beavers in this pond, but it sure seems likely. As you know, it takes a lot of work to land yourself a beaver. So what I'm really hoping to do now is actually find a beaver nest, better known as a lodge. Now some people confuse a lodge and a dam. It's actually quite different. A dam is meant to prevent flow of water, whereas a house or lodge is meant to house or lodge the beavers. Sometimes they're bank beavers, and other times they actually make themselves a lodge. It really depends on the situation. There may be a, a chance down in here we might be able to find a bank den. Yeah, I think we're onto something. So we've got another, what looks like a beaver slide, but it actually doesn't go up. It doesn't go up into the uh, hillside here. It actually goes down in that little tunnel there, and then it rises up. So that would be a, that would be a bank den, for sure. But there's not a lot of food around here, so they don't seem to be hanging out in this neighborhood, but that looks like a secondary. I would call that a secondary. 
uh, house, lodge, backup plan kind of thing. Doesn't look like there's a lot of things that are disturbed in this area so that they're swimming in and out. So that would tell me it's not very active. And uh, it doesn't look like there's too much going on inside. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll shove a camera up inside there, see if we don't find a beaver. I think that's probably the first time everybody shoved a stick up in the, in the hole. The last time I put a camera in the water on a tripod, it tipped over and I lost my camera. There's a stick up in the trees here. I'm gonna get it down. I can use it. There we go. We can use one of the sticks that the beavers chewed against them. So my idea here is to, uh, we got the Aquaview here. It's a pretty good live camera. It's gonna give me a live feed. So what I can do is kind of aim a little better and. I can kind of see what you guys are going to see. I got myself an Olight flashlight. We got the camera fired up. Now we're ready to shove her in there. Shove her in the beaver hole. Get the flashlight turned on. Alrighty, I think we're ready to go in. So that camera is waterproof, but the uh, flashlight's not. Okay, so far so good. Whoa, that thing goes way, way up there. Holy smokes, you guys see that? That is intense. I gotta get the camera out of the dirt there. Kind of have a hard time making that little, there's a little bit of a bend there. There we go. That's a better view. Holy, this thing just keeps going. Holy smokes. Whoa, what's that? Huh. Something moved there, I swear. Did you guys see that something move? Oh, geez, there's eyes. Is that eyes? That's eyes. That's freaking ice. What the heck is going on? Is that ice? Dude, there's eyes up there. Something's up there. Oh my God. This thing's freaking me out, man. Ah. Ah. Was that eyes? That's got to be eyes up there. Man, I can't go up any higher. I need to get a long. I need to get a longer stick. This is going to be a project for tomorrow. I got to get a longer stick to get up there, all the way up. I swear there was eyes staring at me. This thing is at, it's at eight, eight feet tall, and there's no end in sight. Okay, I'm going to pull this out. We know this hole needs to be investigated further. I'm gonna get myself a little paint pole. I have a paint pole that it's extendable, so as I get it up there, I can extend it more and more and more. Look, there's, what the heck? There's freaking bird feathers up in there. Okay, so now we know that this works. Oh, my heart is racing so bad right now. I don't know why I'm scared to stick the stick up there and just have eyes staring at me, but I guess I'm kind of afraid because I'm in a, a little bit of a pit here, if you can tell. So if anything comes shooting out there, I'm in, the, I'm in harm's way, man. I'm right, I'm right in the firing lane. Here's a good look at the, the pond situation here. So it's not a very, very big pond, but it uh, kind of extends this way a little bit. And that's where we came from over on the other side here. Now we're going to continue to make our way over here and see what we don't find. Whew, that was a rush. I'm excited to try to moor with a longer stick. I am so surprised by how far that tunnel goes. That would be the pinnacle, the pinnacle of, of beaver hunting, of hunting for beavers is to get like inside the den it's only been done a few times into the den of the beaver, but I'll try. Stick around. Here's another spot that got absolutely devastated by beavers. You can see all the fresh chippings. You know, there's a beaver here currently when the chips are white. Once they start to turn like dull, you can see the comparison there between a new chip, new chip, old chip. Maybe that's not the best example here. Gray. Once it turns gray, you know it's old. So any white chips here, here's a brand new cutting tree right here you can see it's got uh, white and uh, it's molding a little bit so it's older but you can see how white that is it's been cutting all these trees here they're all cut off down at the base and so this is obviously using as a feeding area here so the question is where are they coming up to get the food so here's a likely spot where they're coming up into the water right there well this looks like a more promising spot to set up we got a nice channel and it's clear. We know there's a beaver coming through here because there's no green, there's no sludge, there's no nothing. 
So it's a pretty clear opening. And actually, if I look all the way across, I see the Beaver Lodge straight over there. And this is a straight shoot. And if we head over here, I can see a whole bunch of cuttings. So this would be a good place to set up a trap. So I'm gonna get a camera set up here. The beavers are gonna run all the way up through here. And then over here is a spot where they've been actively feeding. There's cuttings literally all over the place. Fresh beaver chews here on all of these trees. They've taken out about 10 trees in this spot and about another 100 trees just over my shoulder here. So they're actively in this area. We know that for sure. There's a couple of trees over here we're gonna check out. Look at this. Here's a fresh, fresh big green tree that's been cut. Down here is a couple of trees that they look like they're trying to drag back into the water. So I have to come back tomorrow to check to see what's on that camera. But it's aimed up here. So if we get a beaver coming up out of the water here, we should be able to see there aren't any other activities. There could be all kinds of things, raccoons, skunks. Well, this looks like a pretty good slide in here. See, probably the beavers are coming up through here and then they're swimming up here in order to get food. They've been hacking away at this tree here. It's a giant poplar. And they've been over here on this tree. They started on this one, and then they went over to that one. Man, these beavers, they can't stick to anything. They've been chewing the bark off of this one. They cut this one down probably a long time ago. And then they just keep picking away at trees here and there. You can see they've come up, up, up here on the bank here. They've taken a chomp out of this one. They've been eating the bark clean off there. And then all through here, they've cut trees down. It's insane. All the way up here, there's a tree up there. They've dropped down into the pond so they can probably eat it. There's an older tree back here. But man, they have sure made a mess of this pond. It's amazing how much destruction they can do. There's another little beaver slide here where they're coming in and out. So that could be a potential spot where we could set a trap. And then right over here, they're coming up here and chewing the bark off. They, they're herbivores, they eat bark. That's pretty much the only thing that they eat. And so because they only eat bark, they're gonna be cutting a mess of trees down. It's not a lot of calories in bark. You know, we've eaten bark before. It's hard to make a living off that. But uh, you know, if you get aggressive about it and you got a lot of gnarly teeth and you can chew on it for a long time, you can make a living off just eating bark. Let me tell you what, beavers can get fatty and they can taste an awful, they can taste pretty good. Believe me, beaver tastes good. So just by comparison, you're trying to figure out where the beavers are and they aren't. You can see a beaver could make a runway through here. It can make a trail like it's doing over at that other spot, but it's not. It's all full of green algae. So there's no beavers pushing up through here and there's no runway. So this would not be a good spot to even try for a beaver. So. That's not what we're looking for, just by comparison. Um, this one looks like a good shallow runway. We can maybe use this one. It's got a long finger. It goes all the way up and around the corner, around the bend. Here's another active channel. You can see all the way through here. So you have to check the water depth. This would be a good spot. So basically, um, the first spot we checked is not as good as these ones. Not as easy to trap. Put a camera on here, and then uh, if we don't catch anything, then we know whether or not there's any activity. So we'll know if it's our set, or if it's just the fact that the beavers aren't at this end of the pond. So we're in a nice flat landing over here. It's low lying, but uh, I think we're coming up on the beaver dam here. The beaver house, don't get confused. The beaver lodge, keep an eye out. Maybe there, might, could, there could be a beaver out here right now. Not super likely. We do see them swimming around when you're up north every once in a while. Because they, you know, if they feel safe being out in the middle of the water, they will. They'll go for a ride out there. Let's have a look at this dam. You gotta be careful on top of these lodges because uh, often what you don't see is the problem. They could be uh, very deep water here. And uh, we're gonna get a test. And so you could break through the lodge at any point in time. So check over here. So the water depth is pretty shallow as expected. And this might have started off as a, we'll see it's deep here with three feet, two, three feet there. 
So I gotta watch where I'm stepping. I don't wanna find a weak spot and go up to uh, five feet. And uh, what I'm kind of poking around here now for is try to find the entryway because this is an option to set a trap over here if we can find where they're coming in and out of the den. Okay, here we go. See, this is, that's deep. <laughs> and you can see where my, my footing is. So if I did one wrong step or I fell through the lodge, I'd be up, up the pooper. <laughs> I'd be in beaver fever territory at that point. So I can say that's the deepest pot here. So there's probably, that's probably the entryway. And then as, you know, we don't know how far, if there's a bank den, we will check tomorrow that other one and see just how far up they go. I don't know. So I'm really curious to test that out. Oh, my foot just fell through. That wasn't good. But what I'll do here, I don't think this is a very promising spot just because of the water depth. It's a good spot to, tr to uh, try to snare a beaver here. Because it's so deep, I could set in like two or three snares in the entryway and definitely catch them. That's more of a winter set technique. And I don't see anywhere where they're climbing up. Uh, there's no good slides here. There's a couple maybe bank sets where that it might work over here, but there's no real good promising areas. The activity is mostly over there. But what I'll do is I'll set up a camera, a trail camera on the dam here, just to kind of get an idea of, you know, where the beavers are active. And I'm gonna drop a couple of sticks down in the entryway here. And we'll uh, check the camera and see if they don't move these and we can come back tomorrow and see if they don't move these. Obviously, if these sticks are in the entryway, they're not gonna like them there and they're gonna move them out of the way. So let's get a camera set up and uh, see what's going on here. See if we don't catch some live beaver activity. So I should be able to see any activity out front here. If there's any beavers coming in and out, hopefully I'll be able to trigger something. I don't want to go right on the beaver dam and I want to get like kind of a more broad spectrum. So it might get some triggers, it might not. Thing is like if the beaver's underwater, it's uh, heat and motion that this browning camera detects. So if there's no heat in motion, it's not gonna detect anything. Meaning the beaver's underwater, it's not gonna work. Kind of decided I'm gonna head over to the other side. We'll get our equipment all together and we'll see if we can't trap ourselves some freaking dinner. Delicious beaver dinner. And I got a plan, I got a plan. Oh, you gotta, you gotta check this one out. <laughs> the beavers have hung up a tree, completely hung it up. Look at this. They've gone all the way through it, it's, it's done. This tree is absolutely done, but they hung it up in the top of the tree so they don't, <laughs> they did all that work to cut it down and they can't even eat it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> they should have went after this one. If, if this one they chewed on that side, on the, the back side, they would have fallen right into the pond and they could have ate that thing completely. Oops. <laughs> Lots of wild leeks here, which is nice to see. So this uh, population is definitely thriving. There's even sup up here all in the open. And then there's lots of trout lilies too. All right, dudes. Well, we got some, we got a wet, we're gonna get a wet beaver now. We got some, we got some weather moving in here, but we're not gonna let that stop us from getting a meal, are we? Have we ever let it stop us? Wet beaver time. So if you're gonna catch a beaver, you need some tools. I would highly recommend a pair of trap setters. You don't need these for the smaller traps, but the trap that we're using today, you're gonna need it 100%. We got some wire just to secure, anchor the uh, trap to make sure nothing steals it. I got a safety, which I didn't use last time when I caught my muskrat. So that'll clip onto the trap once we have it set. An ax is always handy. If we're doing some work, getting some branches where we can secure the trap in. So this is the trap that we're looking at. It's a 330 Duke Connie Bear. It is uh, very deadly, <laughs> put it that way. As soon as anything swims through there, this thing is gonna clamp shut and it's basically gonna work like a big giant rat trap, mouse trap. It's gonna clamp in two spots, hopefully behind the head and in the body, collapsing those lungs, wiping the animal out. So I gotta get this trap set. I've also got some scent, which I'll, uh, I'll fire up a little bit too. So it's a foreign beaver scent. We'll talk about that once we get this all set up first. So that there trap set. We've got the safety here on the top. That's just in case of any mishandles or bumps. And you can see these coils here are spring loaded. And then that forces the trap once it's tripped 
by the mechanism you can see in the middle there will close the jaws shut. So the next thing is we got to find a place to put this in the water where we expect that big fat beaver, big fat hairy wet beaver to swim through. So probably anywhere in that channel will do. It's actually pretty shallow. You can see it's only a couple inches deep and uh, I think the beavers are going to like to have like a little bit of a deeper water and we have to make sure our trap stays you know fairly submerged. So that's a good depth here and if you look over here there's actually a run where the beavers are being pretty active. So I think if we set it kind of over here, this is the last little choke point you guys can see over there before they come up into that shallow water. So I think that's probably the ideal spot right there. So this is a little stand here, Connie bear stand, and we can sink that into the dirt and then we can set our Connie bears on top of that. And uh, that'll help us position it just where we want it. And I'm hoping I can get a trail camera set in the right place where we can actually see this trap work. To me, that's the ultimate in learning how to trap animals better, is actually getting eyes on animals. And of course, we can't see our traps working at all times, but those Browning trail cameras are sure gonna help us out. And I've got some scent supplied by the Canadian Coyote Company, and those those beavers are gonna come in sniffing. Sniffing for the foreign beaver that's messing up their, messing up their lunch. They don't like to compete for food just like anybody else. All right, we got her in there. I don't know if it's as I want it, but the soil, the ground under here is not mud. It's like solid clay. So it's hard to get that uh, holder, setter thing or uh, just at the right depth. But uh, because it's not super stable, it's a little wobbly. I'm gonna add some sticks here. In uh, there's rings, which is normally how you fasten it anyway, into the, into the springs here. And uh, that'll just provide a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra stability take the wobble out of it. And the only other thing I wanted to do here, we're gonna get a stick. We're gonna drive a stick into the, just a little skinny stick here. So I did pick this up at the Canadian Coyote Company and uh, they're a good sponsor to my channel too. So you guys check them out and check out the Duke Traps too. If you guys wanna get into trapping, I would highly encourage you to do so. so. Essentially what it does is it imitates a foreign beaver. Well, it doesn't imitate a foreign beaver. It's from a foreign beaver. So you trap the beaver and you keep the caster glands that's what gives the beaver its smell. And uh, they turn this into lure. Beavers are very territorial and they don't like the scent of intrusion. They don't like to have any beavers around, right? Because you can imagine if there was like a bunch of foreign beavers in this location, what would happen here? I wouldn't be surprised if we attracted some other critters here too, like raccoons and coyote. Um, can I, and it, obviously lots of things find beaver to be a very delectable meal. Not just me. Actually, three safeties on there right now. Each one has a little safety. So there's a little safety here, and that latches over to hold the spring so that the spring can't pop open. We've removed the latch from the top and on the other side as well. And then that over there, the chain, we can tie it around the trees here so we don't lose our trap. There we go. Just throw that chain on around on the other side. And don't lose your, don't you lose your safety. This guy's super easy to lose. We got a camera rigged up here on a post and what we can do is aim this down here toward the trap and hopefully get that action on tape. There's a look at our, our set here now. So we got the stink stick here. We've got the trap set there and we got a nice beautiful run for the beaver to come through and hopefully I mean you can't go any other way so if he comes through here that's a that's a dead beaver cameras right here so it's gonna be studying our abilities to catch food in the wilderness
Well, good morning, guys. I got my giant paint pole here. This sucker is eight feet tall. Well, maybe six, maybe seven. Seven feet tall, it doubles out. So I can go up to 14 feet. Tell you what, I had some freaking, well, I reviewed the tape at home and let me, well, let me show you what I saw upon review of that tape. And you tell me if that's not the freakiest thing you ever saw. What the heck is that? That's, seriously, that's eyes right there. Yeah, I know. Watch. Let me know if that thing blinks. That's so freaky, dude. It's just freaking <laughs> staring at me. But it's not moving. That's got, it has to be two sets of eyes. <laughs> did you see that? Where did it go? It freaking moved. Seriously, that's two eyes. Yeah. That's two eyes right there. And then right when the stick moves, right there it moved. <laughs> yeah, there, it yeah, freaking yeah. moved. It right there. <laughs> oh, dude. That is so <laughs> freaky. I can't believe that. It freaking moved. I knew it moved. I knew it was eyes. <laughs> well, obviously, there's something down there that's freaky to nothing else. We're going to go check the trap in just a second, see if we got ourselves a beaver. But the first order of business to find out what's in this freaking tunnel. Like, I had nightmares last night about, about the hole. The animal in the hole is going to come out and attack me. 20 feet doesn't get us anywhere. I guess the mystery will remain a mystery until we can just get a longer pole to shove in the beaver hole. And that's just as simple as that. Let's shove her, let's shove her stick in the hole and see what happens. Right, once we get to a certain level of extension, I'm gonna have to tape this pole together because uh, it doesn't work too good anymore. That's why it's not a paint pole. The line seems pretty free here. Got the flashlight. Here's the moment of truth. Let's get a long lead on this. A lot of slack. We're gonna try to hit bottom on this one, boys. Hit bottom. Oh, loser stick in the bottomless pit here hitting a bit of a blockage there but i think that's the stop place we stopped last time we're going uphill now what the heck is that oh no there's a root okay we're through is that an animal what is that what in the heck is that Uh-oh, we lost contact. Can't see anything. That pole, that, that's full extension, man. I got nothing left. I can't believe how long that tunnel is. It just keeps freaking going and going and going. Unbelievable. I don't see the eyes anymore, so whatever was there could have gone up even deeper or it just might not be there today. Some weird sh Weird lighting things at the back there. Man, it's almost like maybe we should put a trail camera here and see if anything pops out. I'm so curious to see what's at the back of this tunnel. I mean, it can't just keep going forever. Maybe it's like a groundhog tunnel or something now. I don't know, you guys want me to come back with a longer pole and just keep shoving her in there? Endlessly. Oh, that tunnel's gonna be a mystery, but I guess we're gonna have to keep on top of it. I made sure I came out nice and early today because I didn't want Anything to spoil if I happen to catch it. Oh, what did I catch? Is that a beaver? What is that? But 100% caught something. Hey, let me, uh, let me get this. Oh, I could smell that beaver caster. All right, let me put this stuff down here and uh, we'll go have a look. Definitely something in there. That beaver, smelly, funny. Well, <laughs> we, got, we, we got the beaver. Had a little bit of a tussle here. You guys see him? <laughs> He's floating here. You gotta pull these stakes out here. Oh, it looks like a good catch. Wow, <laughs> that is the first time I have ever set a beaver trap. First time ever setting any trap ever for beaver. That's crazy. <laughs> that was an insta kill. No worry about that guy suffering. So now we can just open the trap up and get him out. We want to make sure these springs don't clamp back shut. There. 
But now we got our beaver. Here we go. Here we go, boys. <laughs> we got ourselves a beaver for dinner. Fur and food. <laughs> All right, well, we got that beaver all cleaned up. Uh, it's not how I would typically skin an uh, animal to eat, but for fur, it's, so there'll be little holes for the feet and that's about it. And then the rest ends up being pinned out on the board. But uh, that's a project for another time. So we're gonna grab some leeks here. I'm gonna make some delicious burgers and this will impart a nice oniony flavor to it. There's a ton of leeks in around here, so I don't mind grabbing a bunch. And these ones happen to be on one of the trails out here so they're a good candidate for removing because they get a lot of foot traffic on top from animals and people might be wandering in the woods so there we go there's a good example of a couple of leeks and you don't need a lot of leeks to make uh, something very oniony pretty good handful this is probably all we need but i'm going to grab a few more to share with my family All right, you got Kevin here from, um, you okay? Where, where do I live? <laughs> from here, Modern Self-Reliance. Got beaver meat, you gonna try some beaver burgers? Uh, give it a whirl. Of course you will. So I got, the, I got them all cubed up and uh, I froze it because it grinds better frozen. But as I mentioned, this video is sponsored by mmm-usa.com. But I'll link that all down below and there's a 10% discount code uh, it's through Modern Self-Reliance, I think through Kevin's link, but you can use it just the same and that will get you 10% off your backyard grill. All right, we got to get grinding. We got to grind up some beaver meat if we're going to get a, get to eating it. We got the, the hand grinder. And while you guys are watching us do that, I want to read to you a story all about beavers. Getting settled in to get our beaver prepared for munching on. I had contacted... Well, I've, I heard about these books. There's, uh, I got whole season one. The author here is uh, Bimisi Teyanita. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I mean, it's a whole series. But uh, if anybody needs some humor right now, it's us. It's the whole freaking world. So maybe you want to read, put Tony's nuts in your mouth. <laughs> I haven't read these in a while, so I actually forget them. So it's good to just pick up and have a good chuckle. Come swing with us. Can you imagine what that one's about? And uh, Susie looks at balls. <laughs> uh, you probably know what Spank the Monkey. Uh, let's uh, Spank the Monkey lend a hand. <laughs> lends a hand. Spank the Monkey lends a hand. And of course the pertinent one today is Brenda's Beaver Needs a Barber. You can see that? Brenda's Beaver Needs a Barber. Reach around books? Did I say wrap around? Yeah, reach around books. So Brenda's Beaver Needs a Barber. I think I'll give that to... Uh, my wife, it's a ladies, ladies style shirt. Spank the monkey. So I guess, that, I guess I wear that one. I did get permission to read the book. So while we're getting our beaver prepared for eating, I'll read the book. Hopefully you guys can see the illustrations. I feel like a school teacher right now. Brenda has a beaver and she's ready to confess. As soft and sweet as it may be, her beaver is a mess. Brenda's beaver's big, Brenda's beaver's hairy. Every guy who's seen it says that Brenda's beaver's scary. Brenda took her beaver for a swim down at the lake. By the looks that she received, she figured that was a mistake. She stuffed that furry mound into a swimming suit. It stuck out all around. It was anything but cute. Some who saw it laughed. Others were just stunned. Brenda's beaver was hanging out, soaking up the sun. Her friends could not believe her. They said, we need to talk. 
They covered up her beaver and they took her for a walk. Brenda dear, listen here. We want to help you out. Your beaver needs a makeover. It really needs it now. I hope we don't seem pushy, said her biker friend named Kim. Your beaver is too bushy. We just think it needs a trim. Savannah pulled her beaver back to show off what she'd done. Hers was a nice long landing patch. It looks like it would be fun. Chrissy's beaver is quite rare. It could be worth a million. Hers is bare. It has no hair. Her beaver is a Brazilian. Catherine let her beaver loose. She said there's nothing to it. Grab some clippers and a can of moose. We'll show you how to do it. Kim produced some scissors and Chrissy had some wax. Now all that Brenda had to do was sit back and relax. As they came towards her beaver, they said, now don't be scared. We're going to see what's underneath that frumpy pile of hair. It ended in just minutes. They didn't leave her much. When Brenda's friends were finished, she and her beaver blushed. Her beaver was so tiny they could not believe their eyes. It was smooth and it was shiny. It was hard to recognize. Now Brenda is so proud, it seems like every time we see her, she is the center of a crowd, just showing off her beaver. Anyway, these books are pretty cool. So there's a whole set. If you uh, can appreciate my humor, you can definitely appreciate this kind of humor. And I'm not gonna spoil any of the other books. Anyway, good fun. Hope you guys appreciated that and I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a link <laughs> if you want to you grab those books. All right guys, now I think it's time we can actually eat some beaver. <laughs> it's funny, it's a funny book. One's yours, that one? That one's mine, it's got the cut. I don't know. <laughs> Just crush them. <laughs> Squish them in there? Yeah. Want some bacon? Just extra bacon here. Ooh, bacon, put bacon on there. Oh, is it cooked? Yeah. Oh yeah, bacon cheese. Oh, we didn't put any cheese on there. A plate warmer too, just put your put your burger on there. Are we gonna eat this thing yet? Hold on, you're not in frame. I'm, I gotta, I gotta be shorter than you, there you go. I couldn't cut my tomatoes because I used the same knife for cutting you meat. You just touched the knife. Oh well. And now you're touching your burger. You know what? <laughs> Not the first time I've eaten raw beaver. Never eaten raw beaver. Have you ever had beaver before? Uh, I don't think I've ever eaten beaver. So it's, um, <laughs> it's a memorable, memorable occasion for you. Eating you know, beaver with my brother. You never for, forget your first time eating beaver. So go for it. I'll let you go first. I've had beaver before. I'm going to burst the cherry. Burst cherry tomato and your beaver? Where's your beaver? I'm gonna burst the cherry. Burst the cherry. I just tried without the, that's good. Of course you wanna eat it, like eat the beaver relatively naked so that you can get appreciation for the flavor of the beaver. It just tastes like burger. Top three. Wow. A burger I've ever eaten. Wow. It, 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 the only thing, the reason it's not the top burger is because the bun sucks. <laughs> if, it had a, if it had a proper bun, I think it would be like, you know, top two. Mm, that's good. Okay. On a scale one to 10, would you, that's gotta be like a 9.95 .9 or 9.94. Yeah, it's up there. I would, uh, I'd have it again, definitely. Well, well, there you go. Beaver's good to eat, guys. I just got word from the landowner. He wants the rest of those beavers gone, so I might have to go full on the salt. He wants them gone, so we might be doing another adventure. Maybe we'll cook a... Beaver up in a different way. I'd burger them all. I just say. go full on burger and just have like a big party. Come down, we all pound on the beaver. Like a beaver the whole, fest. The whole gang together to do to do a pound town. Mmm.usa.com or mmm-usa.com. It's delicious actually. So there you go. Kevin doesn't Kevin won't lie, and he's he's sold on the beaver. So there you go. And if you watch the video all the way through, I really do appreciate it. It's pretty much the only thing that matters right now. Click hard on the video when it first comes out. Watch it all the way through. Now, I know you guys wanted an update too about the fish. And actually, I see two. I fed them before and I saw one. I could confirm one coming up, not quite to the surface feeding. But now I see two just in the shallows here coming up and sipping at bugs. So that's good. I mean, it's not great, but it doesn't mean, you know, we only got two left. 
all four might still be here. I know some of you guys have been sending me questions via Facebook and Instagram about whether or not these fish have survived. So we know at least 50% of them did. We had a big slew of rain, came in, muddied everything up, and I thought for sure they were dead. So I gotta let Kevin know that he can continue feeding them. And uh, hopefully in a couple months, we'll get, uh, we'll get a trout dinner out of these guys. That's pretty cool. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.